episode four, I believe. And what we're doing today is we're going to test some of our theories, test out what we've learned so far. We've done a lot of math the past couple, three episodes. Kind of got bogged down a little bit. Today we're going to do some, some testing. And let me tell you about what we got here. This is our test mule. This is the truck known at our round power driven diesels, Oscar. Looks like a trash can. It came out of a trash can, so we call it Oscar. Um, you'll notice this crazy filter setup. We've been doing a bunch of filter testing, trying to figure out what's the best filter out there. We've got a lot of interesting data. And uh, anyway, we're just doing a little bit. The turbo we're using today, the turbo that we're going to be using for this testing today. This is our, this is a turbo that I use a lot in compound setups. This is a little, it's a small upgrade power wise from an HX35, maybe 50 horsepower over a stock turbo, not a huge power gain. The thing I like about it is it's got the 360 thrust bearing, it's got a billet compressor wheel, it has an O-ring on the compressor housing so it doesn't leak anything, uh, no boost leaks there. So it's a really good turbo that I like to use a lot for my lower power compound turbo system, 600, 650 horsepower and under. Real responsive, real good towing turbo. So that's what we're using today. This turbo is capable uh, around 450-ish, maybe. Not uncorrected, not here at our altitude, but on sea level, maybe. Maybe not. So around f that's kind of where it's at. And um, so what we found, if you go back, if you looked at our last ep uh, episode, we found that we're hoping between 340 to 390 horsepower at a 4.0 pressure ratio. This turbo will not get us to the 550 horsepower uh, range. And what's going to be interesting, what I'm going to show you today is, is volumetric efficiency. We've talked a lot about volumetric efficiency. And we used it as part of our calculations. If you remember, we used 75% volumetric efficiency as our, as our number. And uh, I'm going to show you today how the engine is not going to change. But there's a common, a common theme, uh, or I don't know if it's a theme, but when you have a turbocharged engine, everything is dependent on the turbocharger. They say it's a slave to the turbo. Everything is a slave to the turbo. doesn't matter <coughs> what engine you have, you can choke down any engine you want with a small, too small a turbo. And so what's going to happen here, I, and I, we use this turbo on purpose, is um, this turbo is get, has volumetric efficiency for this motor at a lower RPM. This is what you'd use a good street motor, street turbo, because it's going to be real happy, you know, 1600 to 2500 RPM. After that, what's going to happen is this turbine housing is going to be called choke. Okay, it's going to, it's not going to want to let any more flow through. It's just going to start getting really high pressure. So what's going to happen? And we'll show you this dyno. It's kind of interesting. Is the pressure in the exhaust manifold is going to be much higher? the pressure in the intake track. And what, and what happens is, if you can imagine, you have a piston. When the valve opens, you have that 45 pounds of boost or th whatever the boost number is, that valve opens. It's going to push that piston down. You actually get power coming down because you have your pressure, you have your square inches of your piston, and it pushes that piston down. On the flip side, when that exhaust valve opens and there's a whole bunch of pressure in that exhaust track, it has to push that away. It has to push against that pressure. And that's a loss. And so the perfect scenario for a turbocharged engine, you know, a great scenario is one to one. And it, if you have 35 PSI coming in, 35 PSI going out, it's a wash across the pressure, across the piston. And then it really is your volumetric efficiency of your engine. And you'll find that every turbo will have a spot where it'll be one to one. And then as you go beyond that in RPM, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And so you really need to, t to buy your turbo and size the turbine side for your intended RPM range. This is, like I say, for a towing compound setup. So it's not really made to be all that great at 3,000 RPM. We're going to run it to 3,000 RPM and watch what the power does. We're going to run it at the boost at our 4.0 pressure ratio where it should make between 340 and 390 horsepower, which it's not going to do and just to see what happens. And uh, it should be noted that I've talked a lot about between seven to eight horsepower uh, per pound of air moved for a street style setting, tuning. Uh, this, this being that it's our truck and we can't resist it, we have tuned this up a little bit more than you would a typical street. Some street guys would do the timing's kind of high, not high in our opinion, but high for some people. They're like around 25 degrees, 26 degrees timing, give or take. 
And um, we got a, some a relatively aggressive fueling. We haven't really turned the pump up besides just delivery valves, so it's not like we've been crazy on the pump. Just a little, just we got the timing bumped up, hoping to, because that's how we like them. A little bit harder to start, but we still like them. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to use my uh, turbo tuner and try to get it right at 35 psi. That's kind of what we had in our notes. Let me go grab my notes from last week. The 36 psi is, I think, what we're we're trying to get at is right at 35 to 36 psi is going to be our our number. 35.7. 35.7 is a 4.0 pressure ratio in the area that I live. It's around you know 55, 5800 feet elevation is where we're at right now. Our air temperature here is not 85 degrees. We kind of we kind of remember if we had talked last week about you know, at 85 degrees, at such and such thing, we're going to have this much air. So we, we have a, <coughs> a little bit better conditions because it's, it's February here, or March, I guess now. Yeah, time's flying. But it's, it's March now, and uh, I would guess the temperature in our shops maybe 50 degrees, 55 degrees. And so we got a little bit cooler air to work with. And so I'm going to get in the truck, start it up, and we're going to do a pull. I'm going to try to get, I'm going to play with my turbo tuner. I wish I had a way to show you my boost gauge. But this truck, like I say, we, it's a beater truck, and it, the tires on it are not balanced terribly well. So it's kind of bouncy in here when I start ro riding this thing. You'll see it on the, on the screen there. It's pretty bouncy. There's no way a camera inside could show you the boost, but I'm going to turn the, turn the knob to get us right at 35 PSI, and uh, we're going to run the dyno, and then we're going to look at the graph, see where it makes peak power, see what happens towards 3,000 RPM, and then we're going to uh, calculate the volumetric efficiency using the stuff I've talked to you about, so we can kind of get some ideas where we're at here. There we go. Well, let me turn the fan on here. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Turn my fan on here to keep my engine from overheating. Here we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some quick get it up to speed and overdrive. Just a bunch of little runs, nothing on a real car boost I'm making. I'm going to turn my little knob that I've got here, the little turbo tuner. To get me right to 35 PS, what happens on these things is it'll spike a little bit past the uh, setting and then fall. So I'm going to have it fall to 35 PSI and then I'm going to have it be at that 35 PSI throughout the run on the dyno graph. So you'll see all that in the dyno graph here. Just hold on one minute, you'll hear me rev it going back down and see how we can do this. Again, once we get a load on this, it may boost a little high with the load, so we may do a couple runs here to try to get it just perfect. We'll try this one more time here. Okay, that held 35. About 38 peak. So now I'm going to go over here. We're going to apply a load to this guy. And we're going to not a huge load, it's not a heavy truck. We're going to try to simulate this truck in the, on the street. 
So I got it said about 5,500 pounds is the equivalent of what this thing thinks we weigh. Best our booth, but we're going to find out and make some changes if needed. Okay, we're going to go first test run. We're going to record the graph you're going to see is going to be recorded from 2200 RPM, and the graph is going to stop at 3000 RPM. And we're going to, if this thing doesn't really like going beyond 3000 RPM with this not working, hold on a second. Can you not hear me? Okay, I guess, let me talk this again. I guess my microphone wasn't working, so let me try it now with this microphone. What I'm going to do is, um, I've been working on getting the boost right to 35 PSI. I, hit, I was doing a couple different uh, non-loaded runs, playing with the turbo tuner to get my boost right at 35 PSI, because that's what we want to do. So, I've got it to 35 PSI, <coughs> which is a 4.0 pressure ratio. Uh, at my altitude, 35 point something. So um, now I'm going to do it with with a load. A lot of times a load will give you more boost. So I'm going to do a run with some load. If it gives me more boost, I'm going to back it down and see if we can't get it right at 30 p at 5 psi for for our run. And our run's going to go from 2,200 rpm to 3,000 rpm. And uh, at 3,000 rpm, it's really starting to fall on its face because, as I talked about, this turbo, this turbine, just chokes pretty bad and our, our volumetric efficiency really drops. So let's do our first run and see what happens. Okay, now I held 35, we repeat a little bit early. It held 35 all the way through the runs. And so that's actually pretty good. We can actually look at that graph. It worked pretty good. Let's go uh, over here to the computer. We're going to pull up the screen that has the trace on it and go take a look. <coughs> Hold on one minute. I'm going to let this truck cool down in a second. I'm going to turn it off and then we're going to go run some numbers uh, real fast. Hold on one second. up the trace. I'm going to pull up the trace here and, and take a look at this thing. This is going to be our dyno graph. Hold on one second. Okay, let me just get this part of the theme of the screen. so you can kind of see this a little better. I got some things I want to talk about here. Okay, so look at the peak power. Right about, the peak power is right at just shy of 2400 RPM. About 2392. And that was 397 horsepower. And that was right at 35 pounds of boost. So we know that at 75% volumetric efficiency, Let's say, as I talked about in the dyno, the dyno you can get peak numbers, not average numbers. So we're going to say we're going to get eight, 8 horsepower per pound of air moved. And so, with 8 horsepower per pound of air moved, and we have 35 psi going on that engine, what was our volumetric efficiency at 
2400 RPM. Um, I'm gonna, I'll show you the math next week, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you what it was. Let me see if I can get my... Hold on one second. Can I get my... Can you get this? You can't get this on there, can you? Never mind, never mind. And so, in order for that to have happened, at 2400 RPM, let's say, we had to have, if we're getting 8 horsepower per pound of air move, And so, we're having to be at 75% efficiency. We would have seen about 321 horsepower. So we know at 2400 RPM, this engine was doing better than 75%. So I'm going to go up to 80% and look a look. So 80% for 343 horsepower. We just did 390, uncorrected, right here in this temper this today. So it's better than that even. Let's go. I have my air temp set at 60 degrees, so we're pretty close. Let's go to 85% efficiency, 364, getting close, still not quite there. Um, 88%, 88% puts to 377, 90%, 386. This is getting ridiculous. 90% efficient at 8 pounds, 8 horsepower per pound of air move. So this is probably where this turbo and this engine are right at 1 to 1. This is where it's really happy. Uh, you got great, great uh, pressure intake and exhaust. And let's go back to that trace now. When you look at that trace, you can really see it just falls. It, it, it peaks right here. The torque falls. You always see torque fall. That means your VE torque is a total function of volumetric efficiency. If your boost stays the same and you watch your torque fall, that means your VE is falling. You can just watch that line fall. And you can just, as that blue line drops, that VE is just dropping, 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 dropping as we go because that, you know, you'll notice is the, the horsepower does not drop as fast because the RPMs are climbing and horsepower is simply a mathematical equation, equation derived from the torque. And so if we had the same boost, that whole time that blue line is dropping, our boost did not change. All that changed was that the pressure, you know, differential coming into the engine, now the engine is getting worse and worse and worse because that turbine housing is choking and choking and getting worse and worse. And so let's look at 3,000 RPM here. We, we, our last horsepower was what, about... 300 and let me get an opinion of the guy saying this. What do you think that horsepower is? The red line, the last, right when it cuts off, because it stopped recording at 3,000 RPM. Could, see if we can figure out what that power number is on the red line at the very, very end of the red line. Yeah, right there. What is that number? What's that? 327. So 327, correct. Uh, corrected. What's the uncorrected? So it dropped even more now. What's our correction factor? Let's figure it out. 15%? Times that by 0.84. So if we take 274, so we lost over 100 horsepower going from 2,400 RPM to 3,000 RPM. That 600 RPM swing, you watch that blue line fall so hard, we lost over 100 horsepower. So let's say 274, you said it was? Let's go back now. I'm gonna, I'll show you this math next week, but I'm just going to tell you real quick what it is. So at 370, 274 horsepower at 3,000 RPM, We're still dropped. Well, let's see where we drop to. So let's go down to 75, which we want to be our goal. We're going to have to get a much bigger turbo in order for that efficiency to work at 75%. So 75%, we should still be 400 horsepower. Oh, hold on. Yeah, because we're at 3,000 RPM. So no, no, it's not that. Let's drop down a ton. 60%. 321. Well, we're getting closer. This, this shows you how terrible this thing, this thing just drops, what a turbo can do to an engine's volumetric efficiency, good and bad. Let's go to 55%. That gives us 294, getting closer. 268 to 50, so 52. So I calculated this down. It took us clear down to 52% volumetric efficiency at 3,000 RPM. So we went from 90 
to 52 as the RPMs climbed. And this is what is so important about turbine housings. A lot of people, when they call in, they want the biggest turbo and they want the smallest turbine housing because they want spool up. Everybody is so concerned about spool up, which I understand that. But this is what you're going to have happen. And you got to understand, if you put these giant turbos in with these tiny, tiny houses, you guys will get these 0.90s and these big, big turbos because they want spool up. And they want to get the big, big, big turbos for power on the street. But you are just killing, killing your top end potential as you put these tiny housings. I know people machine housings for smaller, from a smaller frame. They'll open up that turbine wheel housing to fit on a larger frame turbo. I did this when I was first learning turbos because I was like everybody else. I wanted bigger spool up. I took a GT4088 housing. I hogged it out, put it on GT4202, and it's on the street. But once I uh, finally gave that up because I wasn't happy with performance and put on a 1.0 from a GT4202, much, much bigger housing, it opened up that turbo crazy. Then I went to 115, and again, I picked up power on the top end. So you, got, you just need to decide where you want to be on your RPM range and, and realize that as you kill these turbine flow, all you're doing is dropping volumetric efficiency because once you reach that spot where it's one-to-one -one and happy, then it's going to fall like crazy. So what we've learned today is the Cummins engine usually has a pretty bad rap for volumetric efficiency with the stock cam, stock head. And it does as the, as the things move up. But we just saw with our own eyes that in its design range, it's actually pretty dang good. I mean, we just hit 390 horsepower, uncorrected, stock cam, bone stock head. This has never been off. We retorqued the head just yesterday. And uh, at 35 pounds of boost, this thing did 390 horsepower to the ground, uncorrected. So it's really not that bad, like people say. When you size the turbos correctly, there have been many people who have hit over 1,000 horsepower on a stock head, stock cam Cummins, because they know, as you now know, that everything is a slave to the charger. As you um, size your turbos appropriately, you can really make an engine work correctly. And so let's do another poll just for fun. Let's see if we can drop the boost to... Let's see if we drop the boost, that will drop flow through the engine. Maybe we can affect volumetric efficiency. Let's see if we, how, you know, this turbo has this, the wastegate from the factory, so it's going to, no matter what I do with turbo tuner, it's still going to make a lot of boost, some boost. One, because I have a lot of fuel, and two, because it has its own canister. But we're going to drop the boost as much as we can, just to see if it affects the volumetric efficiency, because if we drop the boost, it drops the flow through the engine, it's going to choke later. And let's see if we can affect the power curve and the volumetric efficiency simply by playing with some boost numbers. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to crank on this turbo tuner to drop the boost a little bit in here. I'm hoping we can get like 25 or 30. That's pretty low because of all the fuel we have. Even if the wastegate opens all the way, it's going to kind of blow through it. So I don't know if we'll get that low with the amount of fuel I'm pushing through this thing. Uh, I might. Well, we'll do some playing here because I can drop the fuel quite a bit with AFC Live. But I want to. I might do that. But first, let's see what happens with this. Hold on one minute. Let's do some playing here. Again, I'm going to go through some gears and try to set up the boost as low as I can get it with the turbo tuner. Okay, let's see what we get here. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So we dropped 10 pounds of boost. That's about 25 pounds of boost. So let's Let's see if that decreased flow does anything for volumetric efficiency or if it's purely based on RPM. I don't. Let's find out. Hold on one second. Let me start this test. So we're down about 22 pounds of boost. Work 
Ooh. Scars Gazas came off, kind of smoking out the shop here. Okay, let's see the kind of power we got out of that thing. The long, long pole. 25 pounds of boost. We got 310 horsepower. Cool. We can let this thing cool off for a minute and we'll, uh, so 25 pounds of boost, this is kind of giving you an idea of what kind of tuning can do to a vehicle. This is 25 pounds of boost. This is about a little bit more than your bone stock truck will, will make. And, but yet we are way beyond what a bone stock truck makes. I mean, this truck made like 130, 120 corrected horsepower to the ground stock at 25 pounds of boost. We just did 310. So, you know, with, with a lot of fuel and some timing and some different techniques, you can get a lot more power, the same amount of boost, uh, you know, if you uh, tune it right. So let me let this truck cool off a little bit, and we'll go back over and play with some numbers. Okay, so now we're back over. Let's go view that trace. Let's look at that trace again and kind of see what we're playing with here. Let me pull it up on your screen for you. Okay. Okay, so we have both of these screens overlaid for you. This, look at the angle. It, it still drops pretty hardcore. It didn't drop quite as much as the other one, but still dropped pretty, pretty rough. Um, it looks like our peak torque happened before it started recording. You see, it's already on its way down on this one. So the peak torque had already happened by the time our dyno had started recording. So everything was on the down, downward heel by the time we got here. Um, let's look at the volumetry efficiency again on this one. So let's look at the. At 3,000 RPM, let's look at 2,800 RPM because it, it, was, it was dead at 3,000. I, like, I thought I'd let it let off. Let's go to 2,800 RPM and take a look. So if you had to guess, Lon, at 2,800 RPM on the bottom, the dark red, the bottom red, what kind of power? Can you figure that out? We're right about 308. Yeah, pretty close to 308 at 2,800. 2,773, we're right at 308. A dang gas mask in here if it's 222 222 at 2800 rpm so that is not very good so we got two forty yeah. yeah that seems pretty long According to this, we did even worse. I don't know. We'd have to do some, either our 240s off. I think we're, let me look at this. Hold on a second. I think we're closer to 260. Well, we did three, it looks like it's 308 corrected at 2773. Okay, so, there are, so let's do 2773 because we have a pretty solid point right there. So 2773. We are at 308 corrected, which is two, what is that, 16% off of that. Puts us right at 208 times point, 258. 258, that looks more like what I would think. So at 258, to get to 260 horsepower, we are at 53%. So really about the same. We're still pretty terrible at that RPM. It's still in choke. Even at a lower boost, it is still a just nasty choke. And so it could be RPM related on this particular thing. On this, this turbine just does not want this RPM for this happy. It's very, very much happier at um, the lower RPM.
RPMs. Let's do another run. I'm going to play FAFC live, and uh, then we'll call it good for the night. I'm going to do a little bit of playing with fueling and see if I can uh, maybe do a little bit better. We might be way over fueled, and that could be hurting our stuff as well. Let me do a little playing with the fuel. Okay. So what I'm going to do is see if we can't coax a little more power out of this. Same setting with a little bit different fueling. We're going to turn it way down, do some, so we can make it feel a little better. We might, we're probably overfueled for that amount of boost. Do some playing here. Right now we're not really going to learn anything. I'm just playing on the dyno, so hang out if you like. We're going to just uh, play with some fueling and see what happens with this 25 pounds of boost. Let's try that real fast. That's a, a severe reduction in fuel. We just cut, cut out a bunch of fuel. Uh, let's see how the 25 PSI responds to a, lo a lot leaner mixture. Here we go. I'm going to drop my RPM as well. Taking this thing to 3,000, just, we're gonna, you know, this turbine's way too, way too long. We're going to go from about, we're going to start our pulls now about 1,900 because I don't want to miss that. Um, window like last time. It's so bouncy in here, I can't really push these buttons. Okay, so this is going to be our window. Keep everything else the same. We're just going to drop the feeling. Here we go. Twenty-five pounds of boost. Okay. That may be a little bit of a short window. Well, we hit our peak. We'll see our peak numbers. They dropped after that. Oh, look at that. We picked up power. We dropped a ton of fuel. Picked up 13 horsepower. So, did that help our volumetric efficiency or our burn? Yeah, that's a whole other question is getting the right... Uh, burn on your thing, but I do know it's very easy to overfuel. Well, at least with the Cummins 12 valve, maybe not so much with other vehicles, but you can overfuel things where you actually start losing power. So that's pretty cool. We picked up 13 horsepower by cutting a whole bunch of fuel out. Uh, peaked pretty low too, 2100. That's probably where I just laid into it. I don't have to do some playing with the numbers on that one, but anyway, that, that's the lesson for the day. The lesson for the day is the metric efficiency and how your turbine really affects it. We still have our goal that we're still after. I'm going to my other microphone here. Our goal. We still have what we're. We still have our goal. Can you hear me? Well, okay. I'll go back to the microphone. So we still have our goal that we want. 500 horsepower. What was it, 550? No, we want 550 horsepower at 3,000 RPM. To make that happen, we're going to have to get a turbo that's much happier, much larger in the turbine side to do that because this thing just falls in its face. Anything past 2,400, it just cannot do it. Um, so next week, we're going to do a different turbo. We're going to start playing turbos to see what we want to make happen where. But this turbo is a solid 400 horsepower uncorrected at our elevation. And, uh, uh, you know what? We're going to do one more run. 
I can't resist it. We picked up power, dropping fuel at our 25 PSI run. Let's see if we can drop some fuel at our uh, high boost run and see if we can't crack 400. We did 390, what, 391? I don't know if we're going to crack 400 tonight, but that's, that's what we're going to try right now. We're going to try to drop some fuel, lean out our mixture a little bit, and see if we can't pick up that last six or seven horsepower to get that 400 with this charger. 400 horsepower uncorrected here at our altitude. If you were to go like, a, say, a fun dyno day, just let's go some dyno day somewhere, you'll, you're going to be 450, no problem. For it, maybe You may even break 500. Some of them dynos give you some real fun correction factors that are just, just crazy. Uh, so could you hit almost 450? You could hit 450 at a fun dyno day with this turbo. Pretty easy. And uh, not that it's real power, but, you know, you're pretty close. For, if we do 400 and corrected here, hey, that's all. Awesome. So let's, let's play some fueling and see if we can make it happen. So last time I had 15 PSI going through the AFC live system. So that limited our rack travel to whatever it goes to at 15 PSI. I'm going to turn up to about 20 PSI here and see what happens at our, uh, I'm going to crank up our boost. And we're going to see if we can't make this thing hit 400. All right, boost has been cranked up. Oh. Okay, let's get to 20 PSI here. A little bit more. That's a little bit much. Alright, there we are. Let's see what kind of boost we're making now. Hold on a minute. So we now have 20 PSI going through our AFC Live system. Let's see what kind of boost we're going to get out of sing. Looks like this wastegate doesn't want to give us more than about 38. All right, let's play load and see what happens. Here we go. Okay, so that was, with the load, we got about 38 pounds of boost. Probably see over 40 on the street. But let's see, did we make our goal? I don't know, find out here in a second. Oh, 396. Okay, we gotta, we gotta try this. We gotta crack this number. I'm gonna give it a touch more fuel and see if that gives us more power or less. Are we ri are we a little rich or are we a little lean? We're gonna touch more fuel here and see if we can't do. Okay, we now have 25 PSI going through the AFC Live system. If we don't hit it this time, it is possible to get a little bit heat soaked. You know, you, you always hit your best run on your first run of dyno. If you go to dyno, your highest power run, probably going to be run number one. But we'll see if our little bit extra fuel helps us pick up a little bit or if it costs us a little bit and we might go the other direction. Here we go. How do we do? For 
some reason I doesn't the number until the dyno stops. Ah, oh, we did it. <laughs> 403 uncorrected out of this tiny little turbo uh, here at 6,000 feet. That's pretty fun. 2,200 RPM, um, almost 1,000 foot-pounds of torque. This is, a, this is what we use for, uh, like I say, our little upgrade turbo for the towing compounds. Works real good. So anyway, that's pretty exciting. 400 uncorrected, real, real horsepower at this, at this altitude. Um, at about that's about 40 pounds of boost on that one. So anyway, 550 at 3,000 RPM is very possible. Just got to get something that doesn't just lay over and die at 2,300 RPM. And so with that, we're gonna end the show for tonight. And next week I'll show you some of the math I used to calculate volumetric efficiency. I didn't want to take up the dyno time that, so I'll kind of go over that a little bit. And we may have another turbo as well. Uh, I'll do a real presentation on the math used. I'm not going to take much time because I do want to show all the turbos as well. We're going to start playing a lot of turbos here. So, all right. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next week.